Three, two, one, extract. <laughs> Hello folks, I'm afraid this video is going to be rather shaky, so I don't know where I've put my tripod, so blah, 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 blah. sorry in advance for this. So, what we've got for you is our frame for mounting our Model 3 drive unit in our Volvo. So, just basic welding and sanding and more sanding and more welding. Uh, it's just 40 by 40 uh, by 2.5 construction steel. Um, just welder grinder kind of work. Um, but it uh, came out pretty well. And I've used uh, all three of the original engine mounting uh, locations uh, to mount the frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get a little dusting of uh, primer on this, let it dry, and we'll get this into the car and we can um, pop our half shafts in, uh, then we'll be able to locate in this axis here uh, where we'll want our drive unit to be. We can take the frame back out, take it into the shed, and get our drive unit mounted on here and then theoretically mount the whole thing into the vehicle. Okay, good news, bad news time. Good news is I found the tripod, so no more Blair Witch. Bad news is when I was welding up this frame, I may have inadvertently burned some holes in my fully charged uh, jumper. So apologies for that. Definitely a good reason though for you to give me a thumbs down. Now, what we have here at the minute for you is our uh, frame uh, that you saw us welding up. Kind of just sitting here on some wooden blocks on the floor but this frame here basically now fits into our volvo and mounts to the original uh, three mounting points uh, that the engine and gearbox mounted to so gearbox end here um timing cover end on the engine down there and there's one behind you there you can't see yet that was a kind of a stopping the engine from seesawing on these two mounts here so obviously we have our model 3 drive unit here uh, sitting in the middle of it and i have kind of shimmed it into the position uh, that I want it to be in that I think it's going to work for me and I've gone ahead here and I've made some cardboard templates um, for our two big mounting uh, brackets here so these guys will be um, cut out of some 10 millimeter uh, steel in order to um, to make these two I guess end mounts for our drive unit. Now, rather unhelpfully, Elon here has decided to um, do away with any right angles or flat surfaces on this drive unit, which reminds me of a line from Beverly Hills Cop 2. But enough about my film critiquing. critiquing. So, in order to give myself some kind of a way to know the level of the drive unit, I've just clamped a piece of angle steel onto one of the lifting points and I can put my little level gauge thingy on here, very project binky. And if we power that on, we'll see that, oh, <laughs> it lies, it lies. Damn it, I had it at zero. 
it's 0 0.4 now, so I guess, um, yeah, typical while I'm on camera. Uh, but basically our drive unit and our frame are now basically level within, let's say, definitely within a half a degree over the length of the whole thing anyway. So that's kind of important because the last thing we want here is to have it at any kind of an angle this way because then one of our, you know, if I kind of exaggerate that, we'd have one of our half shafts going up while the other one's coming down, which would be very Damien, but also very bad. So, um, quite a few kind of gotchas with this in terms of positioning it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the camera around the far side here and we'll give you a kind of a better look at the half shafts uh, stubs that I have here and you know, the kind of relative positioning and so forth. So first of all, looking down at the motor end here, uh, let me grab something I can Uses a kind of a pointer for you here. So looking down at the motor end, um, we've our driver side, um, half shaft cup here. Now keeping in mind, this is the front of the car here, and that's the rear of the car. So where our um, differential end is at the rear of the car. So basically when we're driving forward in our Moscow, this drive unit will be running in reverse. Now that won't bother us with the open inverter control. We'll just run it in that direction. So, in terms of the positioning in respect to the original half shafts that would have been in the um, engine version, we are in the horizontal plane. We're five millimeters further towards the front of the car uh, than they would have been with the gearbox. And the reason for that is we want to try to keep as much of this material here as far forward as we can. That'll become more a kind of apparent why uh, when we go to when we when this is mounted in the vehicle so I I not worried about five millimeters in that way I don't think that's going to cause us any difficulties at all um, the one that has me a little bit concerned possibly is the vertical height so we are the center of this um, half shaft cup here is about 40 mil is well is 40 millimeters higher so we're we're basically about 40 mil higher here than it would have been in the engine and gearbox uh, setup now hopefully that's something that we can live with um there'll really only be one way to find out and that's when we have our half shafts set up and we're, you know, setting up so that when the suspension is at the bottom of its travel, that our, um, that our, I guess, not really gears, but that the spinny things <laughs> inside the uh, CV joints, um, are at their most outside and then when we're at the top of the suspension travel that we don't bottom them out either on the inner or outer uh, CV joints and conversely as I said when we're at the bottom of our travel that we don't rip one of these guys out we don't want to be straining any of those CV joints so that's uh, where we're at in terms of positioning uh, let me drop the camera down and give you a little bit of a better view on that. All right, so one of the, well, I guess two of the gotchas here that we see when we get into mounting these things in a non-Muskvo or a non-Musco as opposed to Muskvo 
kind of a setup is things like the oil filter and the oil pump down here need to be uh, taken into account in so far as that you know nice though it would be to kind of drop those more there um, to take that 40 millimeter height problem out that would necessitate um, kind of a different kind of a frame here which you know can be done there's nothing impossible um, but it then leads me into complications on the far side which I will now show you all right so over this side here then might be a little bit more obvious this piece of material here that we have that's the part that mounts up to the third engine mounting the one that kind of stops this kind of seesawing um, so keeping that in position and having a different shape of a um, uh, a frame here again entirely feasible um, but definitely complicates the geometry quite a bit so I'm trying to trying to keep it simple stupid uh, so fingers crossed I'm not being completely stupid now you might notice here there's kind of a glaring omission on my drive unit which is the front mounting uh, it's broken off um, now that's not a showstopper for us here um, and it's not actually even a problem really because this sticking out here would actually be a problem because it would start to foul on uh, some of the, par the power steering rack and stuff like that in the vehicle so instead of mounting it on that there we're going to be doing two mounts here on the front side you'll see here I have a little bolt going through um, this kind of bottom lifting mount here so that's going to be part of it and then we'll have another bolt uh, coming up underneath this kind of the webbed part of where this mount was originally on here so I have to figure out some more geometry on this but I have a good idea how I'm going to do this part kind of tying it into the frame here I've also then just got to work out how I tie in this part so maybe a kind of a half moon shape kind of a bracket here um, just cut out of some more of our 10 millimeter steel now <clears throat> bring you over it's a little bit this away now we look at the inverter end oh my studio lights are in the way so uh, on the inverter side here then we've also got to be cautious about things like our uh, signal uh, connection point here we need to be able to access this bottom cooling point here high voltage isn't too bad here um, but also I want to kind of design this in such a way that because this is very much a prototype uh, this inverter is going to be coming off I would say quite a few times as I discover screw-ups and as we discover problems so I'm trying to design my frame here in such a way that removing this um, when it's in the vehicle uh, will not be such a problem so we've got over here as well you might have seen it is a Tesla Model S um, air conditioning compressor uh, that I'm hoping to get working here in this build as well. I haven't done aircon um, on a vehicle before and that pump has been kind of sitting there staring at me for some time. So I'm hoping uh, to get that pump integrated into our frame system here uh, pretty soon. Now, I was just going to go ahead and get the brackets made and get this thing in the car ASAP but uh, I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to get it mounted here in the frame and we'll do things like getting the AC compressor on here uh, we get our wiring harness done we get our motor spinning here make sure there's nothing silly um, do a little bit of cable routing and stuff like that get our coolant pipes kind of set up so that they're ready to mate up uh, to the Moskvo 
And uh, so we'll kind of spend a little bit of time now getting it ready for um, for installation. Um, and at, once we have that done, then obviously we can connect up the half shafts and start spinning wheels um, all the, you know, the quicker as it were. So that's, that's kind of the game plan, folks. So folks, that's, I guess, going to be it um, for this episode. As always, hope you've enjoyed it. On a completely unrelated note to the whole Tesla and EV stuff, you may notice if you look carefully around here, uh, a pair of robins um, have started making a nest here. Um, rather problematically, um, they have integrated some of my Model 3 BMS boards and so on into it. Um, but fingers crossed uh, they're going to be okay there. Um, I'm certainly not going to bother them. The Model 3 BMS stuff can certainly wait. Um, but yeah, so if I'm working on the bench here and you start seeing birds flying around me, um, it's not that I've banged my head on the drive unit a few too many times. It's just that there really are birds going to be flying around me. So, uh, back on message, Damien. Uh, our plan, as I said, for this now is I'm going to spend a little bit of time getting this um, set up here in a, in a kind of a test bed still way here. And, you know, once we get our wiring harnesses and coolant lines and all that done, we'll uh, see about getting it into the vehicle. Um, it's all right. That's it. Uh, as always, thumbs down. Do not share, do not subscribe. Um, do check the links in the description for the Open Inverter Forum and other things I have in there. But don't check the ones relating to any financial support because that just means more of this junk. And I might also need to get bird seed. So hmm, maybe do give me a few bucks for bird seed. So until next time then. Happy cardboard template making. <laughs>